Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Neelanjan Mukhopadhyay and you are watching Present Past and the Future. Very recently, the Supreme Court appointed a three-member committee to mediate on the Ayodhya dispute. Now, this raised very important questions. The first question is obviously whether mediation is possible at all or not on a dispute which has gone on for so many decades. The second is that should the Supreme Court try to settle a matter which is essentially a civil dispute related to whose land is it, should they relate or try to, to mediate and come out with a settlement by some other means. The third question permits, you know, it pertains to the presence of a member on the mediation committee that is Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, who has in the past said that the Muslims should hand over the disputed piece of land to build a temple. There is also this very important question which we cannot avoid at this stage that we cannot ignore the fact that there is a political dimension to this because this is happening right in the middle of elections. The, the responses of various people have been on fairly expected lines, especially from the Hindu groups and leaders. They have said that there is actually no scope for mediation because mandir to wahi banega. So there is no scope for any mediation. Now, very interestingly, most of the Muslim or in fact all the Muslim groups have responded very positively to this attempt to mediate. Obviously, the mediation is going to be held in camera. The process has already started. We will not know till fairly late into the elections as to what is the outcome of it. Now, to discuss something which is of such an importance which is actually dogged Indian politics for the last four decades. You know, I am joined by two extremely credible and independent voices who also happen to be Muslims. Now, I am saying, you know, to, I am laying emphasis on credible and independent voices who also happen to be Muslims. Neither of these two are Muslims who have a credible and independent voice. My emphasis is that they are Identity as credible and independent voice precedes that of it's something similar to the entire debate that whether you are Muslim Indians or Indian Muslims. Uh, I have Zafarul Islam Khan, who has uh, been the founding editor of Milli Gazette and also currently the chairman of the Delhi Minority Commission, and Rizwan Kaiser, a professor of history at the Jam Jamia Milia Islamia. Uh, Zafarul Islam Khan, sahab, I will begin with you that this is not the first time that there has been an attempt to mediate between various warring groups as far as Ayodhya is concerned, but this is the first time that it is being done under judicial, you know, supervised, is, is being supervised by the judiciary. The first question that comes to my mind that something which has been in dispute for so long, what are the prospects of mediation in this? Well, mediation has been tried earlier many times, uh, before the demolition, after the demolition, and very recently by Justice Polok. Uh, various uh, persons, organizations have tried, but uh, it has always been scuttled by this group or that. The first attempt that was made by Maulana Abul Hassan Ali Nadvi was scuttled by Muslim groups, and the other later attempts were scuttled by, by RSS and VHP people. They don't want uh, any such mediation because it means that they, are, they will give something uh, which they do not want to give. Right. Uh, the current uh, uh, development that is the Supreme Court's decision to go into mediation, I think it is not the best of choices, but uh, it is a possible choice because both sides are adamant that the land in question is theirs. Uh, so, 
although it is not the best of choices, I think I personally, uh, when this was decided, I said that uh, it is a, a good decision in any way because we want to get rid of this problem. Uh, Rizwan Kaiser, I will take you back 25 years. It is just a sheer uh, fortune of mine that 25 years ago, very close to almost by the date, my book, The Demolition of India at the Crossroads came out and you were there at the release of it. At that point, I remember very distinctly that we talked about at length after the book was released. Most of us felt that for a large number of Muslims who were just like me, you know, in the sense that came from a liberal past, you know, from a small town, grew up with uh, a certain amount of personal religiosity, but maybe not uh, you know, going beyond the personal domain. The demolition of the Babri Masjid made them feel what it means being a Muslim in India for a large number of my Muslim friends. I am not talking about you personally. 25 years later, much has happened. Ayodhya has been milked, if I can actually use the word. And we now have had, for the last five years, we have had a BJP government in power with a majority of its own. A very simple question. What does Ayodhya mean for the Muslim today? Very quickly, <clears throat> recalling something which is personal and also comment on uh, what is political. I was still a research scholar in JNU and a couple of arrested minded students shouting and shrieking and saying it in Hindi, ki hum apne mulk mein mandir nahi bana sakte hai. I said, by all means, lekin tu mere hi mulk mein meri masjid gira doge. When Babri Masjid was demolished, I mean, it's, it, they didn't break the masjid. I think they broke the heart of people who had grown on in you know good faith that India's constitution protects them, and that is where you realize that Indian constitution was severely dented. But then, uh, given the kind of enormity of hate, conflict, climate that was generated, it was possibly the most inevitable consequence that they did. The problem begins from there. Problem does not begin till Babri Masjid was demolished. Problem begins after the demolition of it as to what do you do about not the reconstruction. Mind you, there is a on record promise that the Narsimha Rao had assured that Babri well, Masjid be shall be libelled. So the Indian state is... Indian state intervened, inter inter but then, then in due course of time, Indian state retrieved the ground, retrieved and allowed, you know, the RSS kind to occupy the center as regards construction of Ram Temple is concerned. Now, construction of Ram Temple must never be in any dispute. Question is that where are you building it? There must be a grand Ram Temple, but where are you building it? Then everything, oh, it all happened. Finally, is a question of ownership of land. Therefore, seeing in the long term and immediate perspective, I would say, I mean, in my opinion, I hope I don't uh, indulge in any contempt of court because I hold the court in highest possible esteem. I, as a citizen of India, would have expected Supreme Court to have delivered its judicial pronouncement on the ownership of Whichever way it went. In fact, that this brings to, uh, let me just uh, ask Mr. Zafrul Islam Khan on this, that various chief justices have had various viewpoints. Justice Keher, you know, he, he at one point had a certain position that trying to do it. Thereafter, there was a position with change, you know. So you have had various chief justices, one saying that we should stick to matters of law, the other one saying that we should know, look at matters beyond law also because this has become a very sensitive issue which pertains to sentiment. Now when we raise the issue sentiment, the, the word called faith comes in. You know, it was coined very famously right in the 1980s saying that we do not have to prove, it was the RSS and the VHP, in fact it was Mr. L.K. Advani who coined this phrase that Ram is a matter of faith. We do not have to scientifically establish that Ram was born there. So it is a matter of faith. So, if for one community of people it is a matter of faith that their believed God was born to have, was born in, in a certain place, then it is a matter of faith for the other community that the tenets of this state, of this country, which actually 
considered to be the holy book of this land, faith in that. So where does one actually lead to? How does one actually say that there is a mediation possible? Well, as I said earlier, mediation is not the best, uh, best course uh, to, to, to be pursued. But uh, since the problem has been so much uh, uh, I mean the passions have been aroused so much and the issue is, is, is now so complicated that even if the Supreme Court, and, and this is my belief and I have said it earlier, even if the Supreme Court gives this land to the Muslims, they will not be able to build a mosque there. Right. So in this situation, what do you do? And do you, do, you, do, you, do you let this problem linger on and on and on with all the resulting riots and hate and, and, and uh, uh, discrimination and othering of Muslims? Hmm. So it's best to arrive at, 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 at some, some, some conclusion, some way. And if the Supreme Court does it, I think it will have some, some, uh, some judicial uh, stamp or some, some, some kind of uh, judicial power to, to impose it whether it is by bifurcating, whether it is giving to Hindus, whether it is going, going to uh, be uh, given to, to, to Muslims. Uh, whatever uh, decision is made, I think uh, the state and also a large part of uh, Hindu organization, of course Muslims are committed all the way, that they will accept any decision that is made by, by the Supreme Court. So let something come out of it and let us uh, put this behind us. Let me ask you a question, you know, which is actually something pertaining to <coughs> theology and also related to the issue of Islam. There are a lot of uh, Muslim voices that one hears also, which says that under Islam, a mosque should not be built on any land which is disputed. It follows from that, that because this is a disputed land, we should actually build a mosque somewhere else, let a land be given and let's hand over this particular piece of disputed 10, 13,000 square feet odd land to the Hindus and let them build a temple. Following from this, first is that whether this is permissible or not, there is a certain yes. grade. Yeah. Yes. The second issue is actually which I'll go to Rizwan to talk about that because this is a political dimension. That suppose that yes, you feel that yes, it can be given and the Hindus do build a temple then will we be able to pull a full stop to that? Or would this then be raised to every mosque in the country saying that this land is also disputed? We already have that ye to bas jhaki hai, Mathura kashi baki hai. There are still pending disputes over Mathura, the, the temple mosque complexes in Mathura and in Varanasi. Varanasi, one we have also seen very recently, some kind of a massive development. But to begin with this entire issue of the interpretation of Islam, that whether it can be shifted or not, what is your view on it? Well, what our Maulanas have been saying is not correct. Mosques can be relocated and this has happened in many countries. Even in Saudi Arabia, they have relocated many mosques because uh, town planning and uh, some other needs uh, demanded that a mosque should be shifted and it has happened. So I, I don't agree with this, and I, I'm myself Maulana, I, I would tell you, I, I have a Sadin in al -Azhar. Yes, that's why I asked yes, you. Yes, yes. So I know that this is, this is not correct, but these people have been saying, and when they are confronted with this, that is happening in other countries, they say we are not concerned with other countries, we are concerned only with India. India is not some, some other planet in the world, right. uh, in, in the universe. It, it, is, it is very much in this world, and if it's happening in other countries, it can happen here. But the matter was complicated by the demolition. Mm -hmm. And people now think that uh, if we agree to any such solution that which gives the land to the Hindus, it means that they are going to demand many other things, uh, many other mosques, uh, th three mosques, 300 mosques, 3,000 mosques, 3 lakhs mosques. Endless. Um, and endless. Uh, including Mathura, about which there was an agreement signed by Mr. Right. Vishnuk Dalmia. I have got a text. It, it was signed in a court of law. After th this agreement was signed, they were given uh, 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 at least half of, 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 of the mosque space to, be, uh, to build a, a mosque. So if they can uh, I mean, uh, go back on, on, on such undertakings which are done in a court of law, uh, people don't trust. This is, this is the main psychological problem that the Muslim community thinks that if we concede on this, then there will be more and more and more demands. Rizwan Kaiser, uh, so it means that under <coughs> Islam, shifting of a mosque is possible. It is possible, it has happened in the past for town planning. 
what is the situation in Ayodhya is not related to town planning or modernization. It is because of a sustained campaign over decades to push out, uh, you know, a community to the periphery. It is less of a religious dispute, more of a political strategy. The question then which arises is that should one accept it? Because if one accepts it, it opens the Pandora's box. If one does not accept it, then it gives further opportunity to consolidate saying that look at them, they are preventing a construction of a Ram temple even though their scholars, people like Mr. Islam Khan have said that shifting of a mosque is permissible. So we are actually left with choosing between the devil and the deep sea. Three very quick things. Quick things. Number one, there is no mosque to be shifted from place A to place B. Right? There is no mosque anywhere. There is no mosque. So where is the question of shifting? <clears throat> Number two, the entire Ajodhya issue pertains to three things. Sentiments, history and legality. Right. The legality involves that let there be adjudication and therefore judicial pronouncement about the ownership of that particular piece of land which the Honorable High Court had divided in three dimensional ways. 2010. 2000, 2010. And since then the matter has been pending before the Honorable Supreme Court. At the cost of repeating, let the Honorable Supreme Court take a final call. Even though this, you know, uh, you know, confabulation that is happening is in camera, it will be monitored by the Honorable Supreme Court and other things. That's another. Whichever party wins, that party will have the final call as to what you're going to do with this. Say for instance, if, if that Ansari gentleman hmm. wins the case and somebody wants to buy it from Ansari, it will be his personal property, it will not be any community's property. Hmm. Therefore, Ansari will be within his right to sell it off to anybody who wants to construct whatever. Hmm. Because then it's not a place sanctified as mosque. Is just a property dispute about the piece of land. Mm. Number three, the question that you raise, can a mosque be built on disputed land? Mm. Now, the, currently the kind of dispute that you have is not about the existence of a mosque on a disputed land. It was made disputed, made to look disputed only in the context of it. And it is true, a mosque cannot be built on a land improperly acquired or which is disputed. Therefore, there is some litigation, etc. So, so that definitely is an ideational situation. How important is it important for the average Muslim that a mosque must come up at the same spot? Let me tell you, for an ordinary Muslim's point of view, Babri Masjid is dead and gone. Right. right? They all know that despite the promise made by Shri Narsimha Rao then, is not going to come back to life, is not going to come back to life in a, in a geographical situation, in a physical situation where it is impossible to construct, even lay one brick in the name of right. Masjid. Right. On a larger question, honoring the sentiments of Hindu brethren, right. I think that, is, that has always been given. One has argued endlessly that Lord Shri Ram was considered Imamul Hind by no less a person than Allama Iqbal. How did it help anybody to understand the Muslim psyche about Ramji? No, they have been saying it again and again. Now the problem is that it is only judicial. This judicial thing is being projected as political. Therefore, my request with Honorable Supreme Court with folded hands as a citizen of India, for heaven's sake, take a call, sir. Give us a judgment, whichever one. If you, if you think that the negotiation that has gone on is not honorable, for heaven's sake, please intervene. Give your judgment. Be done with that. Let the country march on. So that's my point. Mr. Islam Khan, at the time when the presidential uh, reference was made in the 90s by the Narsimha Rao government, at that point, many people had argued, including I had argued, that this is essentially a politician's call. That you have to decide. This is a political dispute. This has to be tackled. If at the political level, if you cannot tackle it at the level of a basic civil case. The judiciary obviously did not then uh, express this. You know, it did not want to take a decision on which the politician or the political class did not have the courage to take. More than 25 years later, how... This is still a festering sore on this uh, republic and it is going to continue for 
years if it is not resolved. It is only going to further divide society. If there is a, an agreement, would it be acceptable to the entire community on either side? Or are we actually doomed to continue living with this problem? No, I think if uh, something comes from the Supreme Court, it will be acceptable to the Muslim community. But uh, obviously, I cannot say about the, the, the other side, or at least VHP and RSS, what they say, because they think that it is something uh, which will give them, uh, you know, uh, victory after victory in elections. And always, you see, uh, before six months before the elections, the uh, issue becomes uh, really activated, and uh, all over the place, you will see, you you will hear slogans about it. Uh, but after that, uh, they will they will forget it. So for them, it is it, it will be a difficult difficult thing. But at least for the Muslim community, it is a, there is a consensus that whatever comes from the Supreme Court, whether they give it to Hindus, give it to Muslims, or give it to the state, whatever they, that will be acceptable. And I think it is a very civilized choice that they have made. Uh, Rizwan Kaiser, as we come to the concluding part of this discussion, you know, for the major part of our lives, you know, so far we have actually seen this dispute continuing to erupt continually. In the remaining years that people like you and me have, would this also continue in the same manner or do you see any signs of hope? Well, uh, very quickly, very quickly in Nalanjan, uh, this time the community is not involved in the dispute. Right. It's a very much dispute about ownership of land. It's not the community, though Sunni Bakh board uh, is involved it's in the litigation process. Bakh, yes. But then either Sunni Bakh board is involved but the kind of heat that was generated in 80s, and if you recall, I'm talking at this 80s, there were community involvement was so apparent. Right now, community involvement from the side of Muslim is not apparent. However, they are waiting with better breath. Let the Honorable Supreme Court take a call and give us, and the judgment, whichever way, and I'm sure judges will take a call on the legality of the matter. Whomever it hands over, the authority of that particular piece of land will be accepted by all, as uh, uh, Dr. Zafrullah Khan is saying. And let that be, let the matter end and let the country move on. Because you see, so long, I mean, there's a kind of dispute. Every other day you can have a dispute. How can you hold the yes, march? Yes, actually there are, you know, I know that you know, for the last many decades we have actually lived in hope. We have all never cease to make an effort to try to find uh, you know a permanent and lasting s settlement on ayodhya this uh, uh, effort is again being made this time it's a supreme court which feels that mediation may work there has been so far uh, fairly positive responses especially from the side of the the muslim community and its representatives uh, the hindu parties have not uh, been as uh, open to the process of mediation despite this in the political class there is hope uh, all I can say is, uh, as I wind up this discussion and thank the two of you for coming and joining me on something which has uh, really torn up India apart for the last is uh, that let's hope uh, for the best. This has actually been uh, an issue which uh, continues to you know, be a mind-boggling dispute. We really don't know as to how to get out of this crisis. You can just hope that politicians stop looking at it as a vote-catching device, especially because we are in the middle of an elections. Thank you for watching this program.